Awesome. What a privilege tonight. What a great honor. I want to thank God for this uh, privilege to bring in the word of God very quickly. Thank God for Pastor Wally. I've known him for some time now. Praise Jesus. Meeting Pastor God sent. Uh, what a blessing it is to meet with you. And thanking God for my brother, brother Akin from the UK. He's a family. And we not wanting to take much time. I have so much to say, but time constrains me. So I will just go straight to what the Lord has for us. I say a word of prayer together with you. Father, we thank you tonight for the things you have done already. Thank you, Lord, for from even the pre-meeting. I've seen you do great things. I've seen you touch my heart. I've seen you do awesome things even tonight through the worship, through the prayers, through the word that my brother brought forth, through everything. And Lord, you are just taking us a bit further. And we trust you. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Such an amazing word my brother brought forth tonight. I am deeply confronted, challenged, and strengthened. Some of the things that he was talking about, I can reckon with them, about spending hours counseling and, and, counsel, and laboring. And as you finish all your counseling, before you even get into your car, the people you went to counsel are fighting again. That is a very common experience. But the Lord keeps helping us to grow and to grow from glory to glory. Tonight, I will just share with us on diligence and dedication in service. I do not think we can conclude anything about diligence and dedication tonight, to be honest, because it's a serious matter, very serious matter. If there is anything that we children of God must grow in, particularly in this end time, ha, diligence, and dedication in kingdom service, in God's service. And I want us to take out the first reading from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Diligence, let's just do some de de definition. It says it's a devoted and painstaking work and application to accomplish an assignment or a task. An application to accomplish the work of God, that which God has called us to do. My brother has talked about service. The other brother was, that was leading prayer, he said you cannot be unacceptable to God and your service be acceptable. It's not possible. So I believe everyone here should be born again. I believe everyone here should know, should have been called out of darkness, called to be with the Lord. But 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says something that I love. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. I want to stop there. Giving all diligence. So I discover that it is possible to serve, but not to serve with all diligence. I discover that diligence can be rationalized or rationed. Some people may decide to serve. Many people are serving in the church, but they are serving with 10% diligence. They are diligent. They are serious. They are dedicated. But their diligence is not up to the measure and the standard that is required by the Lord. If there is any problem, and I'm saying this to workers and to ministers, to pastors and to leaders, including myself, one of the issues you will see in the choir, for instance, people are not giving all diligence, all diligence, diligence to commit themselves first to the Lord. And then to the work that God has committed into our hands. Pastors, leaders, brothers, head of department, and different group leaders. How much of your diligence are you giving to this work that has been committed into your hands? Now, I believe that our garments are white. I believe that we know the Lord. That is one issue that, that, has, that needs to be settled. Another critical issue is how are you doing the work? Is it not in scripture 
that cast is the man that doeth the work of God deceitfully? Is it not in scripture that if you know how to do good and you do not do it, then it is a sin? How much of your time are you giving to that thing you call your calling as a pastor, as a leader, as the head of department, as the head of ushering, how much of your devotion, of your diligence is given to your assignment? Diligence can be measured. And that's why you will even see in normal parastatus, they will say, have you given due diligence, due diligence to the service of the Lord? And what service are we talking about? We are talking about serving God in any capacity that moves the kingdom of God forward. Any capacity. In the kitchen, on the altar, in your neighborhood, in your office, representing God in every way, in every capacity. That we glorify God. That we establish the kingdom of God here on earth. Serving God in lifestyle and character. Serving God even by cooking. You know, sometimes people say, well, I don't do much in the church. I am just in the kitchen. Do you know the requirement to be in the kitchen in Acts chapter 6? Give unto us seven men full of the Holy Ghost. Do you know that it was the kitchen that produced that people like Brother Stephen, when they serve in the kitchen, they will go to the street to turn the world upside down? Do you see their commitment to understanding the word of God from the kitchen to the pulpit, from the kitchen to the street, from the wherever they go, they were spreading the fragrance of God. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 11. Let's look at one basic thing before we quickly go further. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 11. If you can give us on the screen, that was fine. Otherwise, I read. It says, But Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. I have an amplified version, amplified classic version. And it says, but Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here by whom we may inquire of the Lord? One of the king of Israel's servant answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, who served, who served Elijah is here. All that Elisha was doing was pouring water in the hand of Elijah. Pouring water. But as he poured this water, he was qualifying and preparing his heart, his life, for the double portion of the anointing. He did the work diligently. Can I say something to you, my dear brothers and sisters? For eight years, people knew Elisha as a man who poured water in the hand of Elijah. Eight years. For eight years, Elisha followed Elijah. And even Elijah did not know what Elisha wanted. Eight years. There was no murmuring. There was no complaining. There was no anger. There was no bitterness. There was nothing like, I left all my business and I'm following this man of God to pour water in his hands. He was following without any personal agenda. He had only one agenda. What was that agenda? I want double portion of the anointing. About eight years of pouring water in the hand of the, of the servant of God. And it was when the servant of God was about to go, to depart, that he looked at him and said, what do you want? You have been following me for years. Brothers and sisters, are you following Jesus truly? Are you serving truly? I am a pastor and I know many people are easily offended when nobody calls you, when nobody visits you. When nobody, you know, you know, I told people, and I love to say this, those who are following Jesus don't need a follow-up. No. If you are truly following Jesus, you don't need follow-up. No, 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 you don't. He said, follow me. In fact, when Jesus was talking to those who were thirsty, let him that is thirsty, leave him alone, let him come. 
It must be a personal desire to run after the Savior. Elisha was following a man to the point that even when his master, Elijah, his, his senior prophet, as you may call it today, his apostle, as we love to call them with titles, when he was going, he said, Elisha, stay here. I am going to Jordan. I am going to Bethel. The man said, as the Lord liveth, as your soul liveth, I will not leave thee. He was diligent in his service. He was pursuing with everything within him until the man of God looked at him and said, why are you following me? If the Lord is to ask you tonight, why are you doing what you are doing? What will you say? Why are you following? What do you want? What do you want? The reason why most of us are not so diligent with the work that God has committed into our hands is because we lack understanding and we do not know the purpose of kingdom service. Three things that kingdom service can do in the life of a believer. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to people who know Jesus, people whose garment is white and trust in the Lord that even after this word we receive from our beloved brother, brother Akin today, if there were issues in our life, we settled that with the Lord. I believe that we have settled all. If you are keeping malice with somebody online today, please, please do not take this word for granted. Why must diligence be taken seriously? Let's go to Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. Let's look at the life of Moses very quickly. And then we, 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 we see how the Lord will lead us. Exodus chapter 3. If you can put it for us on the screen, I will uh, thank you. Just a moment. Hallelujah. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, <laughs> the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back or west side of the wilderness. Some other translation says, oh, give me King James. New King James is fine. I just needed to amplify for that one. Thank you. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Hallelujah. Let's stop here for a while. At this time, Moses was 80 years old. You know, Moses came out at 40, quickly, according to Acts, Acts chapter 7. He came out to quickly do some things to take on responsibility and to begin to serve the Lord and try to kill somebody and bury the person and try to do one or two things. And then the people asked him a question that sent him into, that sent him on exile. When he got to the place and met Jethro, his father-in-law, the Bible called Jethro the priest of Midian. You would have expected Moses to sit down in the temple and begin to follow this, this priest of Midian and say, you know what? I am also a man of God from where I am coming from. God has called me. I have the calling. And therefore, we are going to be working together. I'm going to be your assistant priest. And then he will sit in that place, but miss, miss the purpose of God. And when he got to Jethro, Jethro gave him animals. This is a prince, so to speak, from Egypt. This is a man who knew at 40 that God was calling him to do great things. He knew, the Bible says he supposed in his heart, Acts chapter 7, that his brethren will understand that God was going to be using him to deliver them. So at 40, he knew the call of God. He knew the call of God. He knew what God I called him to do. But one thing was missing in his life. Pastor God said, what is it? Service. Who have you served? Before you can become, become a laborer, accredited laborer in this kingdom, we want to see your profile. Where have you labored? Where have you served? Before you can attain to the fullness of God, where you begin to do mighty things for God, before we can give you responsibility to handle the choir, to handle the youth, to handle souls, to lead the brethren on evangelism. Can we see your track record? What have you handled? 
What have you, where have you labored? Oh God, you want to handle Israel? You want to deliver Israel? Praise God for you. But have you been tested? Have you been proven? My brother was talking about issues of anger. How do you respond? When somebody, you know, I have seen a situation. I was, I was doing a podcast a couple of days ago. I was there. A man of God was invited to my Duguri. I, am, I was there 20 something years ago. When he preached so powerfully, I was blessed. So blessed. Everybody was blessed. After the meeting, the, the host pastor said, Let us raise offering for this man. They gathered offering. Everybody gave. The planning committee already had some honorarium, good honorarium for him. After the meeting, they presented it to him. The man was angry. Why did they count the offering? The offering must not, who counted it? Because he felt that somebody had taken out of it. I'm telling you something seriously. He was so angry that the host pastor had to, at a point, stand up against him and say, I rebuke the spirit of mammon in you. Before he now became normal again. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> brother. That was a different spirit. He could preach. He could quote scriptures. He could deliver an oratory presentation. Not very different from what politicians can deliver. But his lifestyle and character have not been changed. There was no transformation. He could do great and mighty things and people were blessed. But behind the scene, what a shame. He has not been through the process. He has not been trained. And one of the problems you see in the church today, we have too many people on the altar that don't know the Lord. I asked a pastor here in Rotterdam two weeks ago, here in Rotterdam, I called the pastor and I asked him, are you born again? I asked him, I'm telling you, I'm not talking about choir leader. I'm talking about a pastor in Rotterdam. God is my witness. I lie not in the Holy Ghost. Are you born again? I sat him down. I said, tell me your journey. Where have you been? Where are you coming from? Who are you? Moses began to live for 40 years, sir. 40 years. He was attending to the issue of goat and sheep. Same with David. Time will not allow us. But you know what happened? There was such diligence. I think the only person I can see on my screen is Pastor God sent because my screen is minimized. So I love to talk to people also. So Pastor God sent, I will be asking you some questions. A man who had been leading animals for 40 years, take them out, bring them in. Take them out, bring them in for 40 years. After doing that for 40 years, won't you expect some willingness to set in? Won't you? Why should such a man be taking animal to the backside of the desert? I think everybody should stop. Are you taking sheep to eat? Will you find grass at the backside of the desert? No. Are you people are in a, an area where there is desert? Can you be so committed to that which is not your own? To the point that you are so diligent after 40 years of doing the same thing. There are people today who cannot even, they cannot do one thing for three months. After three months, they want another thing. After four months, this man should be promoted. When were you ordained a deacon? Now you are saying you want to be assistant pastor. When were you ordained an assistant pastor? Now you want to become a full-time pastor. You have not even made full proof of your ministry. You have not. The, the, the department that has been given to you, when you took it over, you destroyed it. There were 10 people when you took over. Now there are only two people, you and your wife. Everybody has left the department for you because of character. And then you are saying, I, I, I want to take the next. But I'm creating problems because character.
after the fact, because the garment is not white, because something, your arm of strength has been seized from you. This man called Moses, no wonder, the Bible says, this man Moses was faithful in all his house. Do you know that the day the older sister of Moses and the older brother, same father, same mother, the day they spoke against Moses, God came down. Moses did not pray. God came down and said, look, if I speak to prophets, I speak to them in parables, in dark speeches. But as for Moses, I speak to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. What qualified him? Sir, diligence. Diligence. That is this spiritual consistency with this man called Moses. For 40 years, if you don't value Moses, then you can take Jacob. How long did Jacob stay in the house of Laban that Jacob already took four girls, four girls from one house? How long did Jacob stay with Laban that Jacob already took all the strong, strong animals from Laban? How long did they stay there? Are there no brethren who come to church? You have been asked to go and follow up believers, follow up members. But because you want to magnify yourself, when you get to the house of the member, you begin to speak evil of the church leadership who sent you. Have you have, do we not have people in church today where you give them assignment? When they get there, they say, you see, don't mind our pastor. Don't mind that sister. Because they want to take over. They want to draw people to themselves. Jacob was in the house of Laban. By the time he was leaving one house, he married the first daughter, the second daughter, the house girl of the first, the house girl of the second, took all the strong cattle. By the time Moses was leaving, Zipporah and two sons, he even left them behind. The father-in-law had to bring them later. Mama Shapahaya. Sometimes you say, Lord, make me like Moses, make me like Moses. Kura baba, kura baba, baba. <laughs> Can you be diligent? Can you say to the Lord, Lord, I will be committed to this ministry of goat and sheep until I find the mountain of God. Until I locate the mountain of God. The mountain of God was not in the city center. The mountain of God was behind the desert. See, my brother Aki was talking about it. Maybe you don't understand. We are running from conference to conference. When you hear that this apostle is in Qatar, you run, you run there. Some of us, we even go to Doha or wherever it is. You will drive six hours to go and look at an apostle to get prophecy or a prophet. To get prophecy. Moses was not looking for any prophecy. He was, not, he was with sheep and goats, sir. Taking them to, he was, he was concerned about the well-being of goats that he had been handling for 40 years. 40 years. Some of us are offended today. We have been in this position for 10 years. They have not promoted me to become pastor. <laughs> you do not know that it is that thing you are doing that will bring you to the mountain of God where you will have supernatural encounter. It was the service diligence in service that brought Moses to what made him locate the mountain of God. Was it not the sheep he was leading? Until he led the sheep to that place, he did not see the burning bush. It is your faithful commitment, diligence in service that will bring you to a place of supernatural encounter. Listen to me. I may prophesy over you today and say, receive it, take it. Take it. May you encounter God. Sorry. Sorry. Your service is like a vehicle. Your service at any level is like a vehicle. It will ask you to commit yourself in holiness, in righteousness, in purity. Commit yourself to God and say, God, you are my all in all. I am faithfully serving. Elisha, pouring water in the hand of Elijah. At the end of the day, what did they get? Double portion. Moses leading the animals of his father-in-law 
What defined the mountain of God? But can I put the caveat? When he saw, he came to a place because some of us, we don't understand that that service you are doing is to bring you to a place of supernatural encounter. And once you get to that place, ha, don't miss your opportunity. When Moses got to that place, Exodus 3, 1 and 2, he said, why is this bush burning? Why is it not burning? Why is it not consumed? Let's read it, please. Let's read it. Very important. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If that's all we can do today, we, we, it's okay. We go and pray. We go and pray. Lord, help me. In my diligence, I will find the mountain of God. In my commitment to basic service, I will locate the supernatural. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Now, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. Verse 3. Yes. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. Verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him. My goodness. People of God. Now this is okay. We, we, can, we can leave this out now and then we'll come back to it later. Many of us are trapped in service. We are so consumed with service that when we, the supernatural happens, we are not interested. He said, I will now turn. Until he turned, God did not call him. Sir, until he turned is a protocol of the spirit. You may be at the brink of an encounter with God if you do not turn. I said, now, the sheep I have served to this point is now time to encounter God. What is happening here? What is happening here, Lord? I want to see the moment he turned, God said, now you are ready. Attention is the price you pay. Attention to the supernatural. Attention to the things of the spirit. No wonder Paul told Timothy, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly, completely unto these things and your profiting will appear unto all men. The moment he turned, God called him. Many of us here, we are serving and God has been calling us, but we cannot hear because our eyes is so focused on the service that we miss God. We are, in fact, I, 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 permit me to say this with due respect. We are serving some of us, but what we are doing is eye service. We are diligent in eye service. When the pastor is there, wow. When the senior pastor is there, wow. When, when there is a reward, wow. When somebody says good about your service, wow. So you are serving, serving but you miss out on the supernatural. God forbid. God forbid that I will serve and serve and come to a place where I should encounter God and miss it. God forbid. God forbid. From that day, sir, from that day, from that encounter, I'm not sure Moses saw the sheep anymore. Sir, <laughs> mama, Brothers and sisters, my beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, the service and the things you are doing today <laughs> has the capacity to bring you to a place of the revelation of Jesus. Every service is intended to call us deeper. Do you know that the moment Moses turned, verse 6, the Lord now began to give him another assignment. Can you see that? From sheep, goats, and Whatever they are, they are, God now say, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You'll be a God over Pharaoh. Yes, verse 7. You can give us verse 7 very quickly. This is where God was introducing himself. You see? If, 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 let me say this. Go back. Go back to verse 5. Let's just pick something there very quickly. Verse 5. Yes. 
verse, verse 4. Verse 4, I want to say something to the fathers. I'm looking at my time is running. Now, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Don't forget that place. What did he say? Here I am. He didn't know who was calling him. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. Verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Two things I want to bring out here quickly because of the fathers. Fathers, <laughs> this is very important and critical. Pay attention. My brother was talking about family, family, family. May I say this to you, dear brothers and sisters? Fathers, one of your primary responsibility in your home is to introduce your children to God. Mothers are to conceive and to bath them. Fathers are to introduce their children to God. In other words, through your prayer life, through your discipline, through your commitment, through your diligence, you introduce your children. Psalm 44 verse 1, our fathers told us, Check the scripture. There is no place where you see our mother told us. Maybe I'm not, there are pastors there, so I'm careful. You won't see that. Our mother told us, no. Father's responsibility primarily to introduce their children to God. When God introduced himself to Moses, I am the Lord, Moses said, here I am. When the Lord said, I am the God of your father, Abraham, Moses bowed down and began to worship. He knew that this was not normal. The father, Abraham, Isaac, and so God had to introduce himself again to Moses through his fathers. Fathers, you have a responsibility. Don't stop playing around. Stop joking around. And yet, fathers will say, my wife is the prayer warrior in the home. What a shame. You should be the prayer warrior in the home. Yes. Sisters are always on time in the church. Mothers are always there. Fathers will be coming late. They will sit down unchallenged. Many of us, we do not know what God has deposited on the inside. Brothers, it's time to rise up. Rise up. Do you know that when the angel came to tell the mother of Samson about the birth of Samson, the father was not there. He was not there. Pastor God sent. You are the only one I'm seeing on my screen. Was he there? He was not there. But he went back and prayed and said, God, send that angel again. Wow, fathers, you can go to God and say, send the angel again. Why? That we may know how to instruct him. And God sent him again. God sent him again. When the angel came again, the father was still not there. But the angel waited. <laughs> Otherwise, he will come back again. So God has positioned us as fathers, both in the church, in our home, everywhere we are. We have certain dimension of grace. Look at the source of grace. Is it, is it Jonadab? Set alcohol before them. They said, our father told us not to drink alcohol, not to buy any land, because God is our portion. And God said, wow, if this people, their father told them, what are you telling your children? Sisters, I need to say this to you. I need to say this to you. Some of us as parents, we have turned our home to a place where we gossip. As soon as you come back from church, you will call. Hey, my sister, do you see what happened today? You see what the pastor's wife did and that other sister did? You will laugh and the children are looking at you. They are looking at you like my brother was giving an example of husband and wife. Now, what of the children? They see the way you have mocked the pastor. You mock the message. You mock everything. And then on Sunday morning, you lift up your hand and say, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey, 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 let me counsel you. You better cry to God for mercy today. That's some of the things that soil our garment. Because in the future, three years from now, you will bring that child back to pastor for pastor to pray for. And the child will be laughing and say, this, my mother is not serious. I have received letters like that. A sister will mock the pastor in the church and laugh and gossip and talk. And do, 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 do. everything was bad. 
You only see the wrong things in the church. The brother that didn't do this, the sister that didn't do this, the youth are this, the children are this. You see, there are people expert like that. They only see everything that goes wrong. They don't fix it, they discuss it. They mock it. Like Mika. Mika that mock her husband. Some people are like that. They are so, so possessed by the enemy, by selfishness, by pride. The Bible says when they were bringing the ark of God, Mika was standing by the window. What should the wife of the king be doing by the window? Should she not be with her husband dancing with him? One day I got a letter from one of the teenagers. He says, sir, look at my mother. This is who she is. What a pain. What a shame. It was hard. Whatever you are doing today, <laughs> brothers and sisters, if it is not according to godliness, deal with it urgently. We have our time is past running. When God said, I am the God of Abraham, the truth led Moses bowed his head. Can you give us that scripture again? He bowed his head. If somebody even said today that I am the God, look at it. He said, moreover, he said, I am the God of your father. Can you see that? The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And Moses did what? He these things. He these things. If God appears to you, to your children, and say, I am the God of your father, would they not be laughing? And say, you are the God of my father. That's my unserious father. That man that doesn't, that, that, that father that beat my mother. You are the God of that, my father. <laughs> I don't want, I bind you, Satan. Yes, character. I was speaking to a brother, a believer, like a pastor yesterday, 24 hours ago. And I said to him, I said, brother, about this time yesterday, not in our church. I just went to do some counseling with a brother from outside. And I said to him, brother, if God is to multiply what is in you as a father, three times, and put them in your children, he said, God forbid. He, he told me himself. I said, no, I want God to, I want to pray a prayer now that God will multiply. He's a very successful brother, financially. So I said, let God multiply everything in you, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and put it or put all in you, three times more on your children. Would that be a blessing or a curse? He said to me, pastor, it will be a curse. I said, brother, fix your ways. Fix your ways. And that's what God is calling us to today, friends. That's what God is calling us to. Fathers, brothers, mothers, sisters, singles. Brother single, you can play the piano. Since you join the choir, every time we are chasing you from one sister to another sister. To the point now that pastor is afraid of you, but you have gift, no character. No character. Or sister, you can see, I see. Because I'm happy. But when it comes to respect, discipline, humility, focus, diligence, missing. Voice, 95%. Character, zero. Humility, zero. Discipline, zero. And then you come and say, Pastor, I don't know why I'm not married. Even maybe some brothers come to pastor and pastor will say, hey, hey, brother, go and pray. Go and pray. Voice is good. Character is zero. The call to diligence, diligent service is a call to encounter the supernatural. Your prophetic assignment is revealed as you serve in that lowly place. That's that, that place, that place, please. You know, sometimes one of the things I see is that some of us have outgrown some things. <laughs> I've had people that will tell me, they say, you know, pastor, I used to play piano 10 years ago, but now I preach now. I don't play again. I used to be in this worship. I don't. David was dancing, even as a king, to the point that he was naked. I met a brother who was doing evangelism on the street, so I saw a man who was open to our, our gospel. So I ran to him, I gave him some flyers. You know what he said to me? He said, ah, I used to be like you guys. Some five years ago, I used to do evangelism on the street, but now I don't do it anymore because our church have grown. It's now an apostle. 
And the Lord said to me, can you see it? He has missed it. People of God, one year later, one year later, the church closed down. He had to relocate out of the city. Why? I used to do like this before. I don't do it anymore. How diligent are you? Even in the basic service in your home. Your home is a ministry. Your marriage is a ministry. In that choir, that is a ministry. What God has called you to do, it cannot increase your capacity if you are not faithful in the little. Those who are faithful and diligent in this little thing will be, greater things will be given unto them. David, also keeping sheep and goat, that was where he was. In fact, it was from sheep and goat, from where, from the bush that he went straight to the battlefield with his catapult. <laughs> And God glorify himself in him. Your prophetic assignment is revealed from glory to glory. Moses left that place and became a God to Pharaoh. But before we finish, can we just take one more scripture? Oh, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Let's take Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 to 3. I have a few more minutes and then we close. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, the call to service, dealing with sheep and goat. <laughs> then the call to his prophetic assignment. If you read it on, because of time, we can't deal with that today. If you read it on, you will see that's when God began to speak to him. To the point that God said, I'm giving you an interpreter, a translator. Your older brother will follow you. <laughs> brother, forget about age. The moment you encounter God in total diligence and genuity, that is why even Second Peter says it. He said, add to, with all diligence, add faith. People are adding faith without diligence. That's why things are not working. He said, give in all diligence. In other words, you have a foundation of diligence. Then, ah, thank you. Wow, that Ignite brother, you are amazing. Thank you. Give it all diligence. Not 10%, not 20%, not 70 all. Then what do you do? Add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. So you see people who are knowledgeable in scripture, but the scripture is not working for them because they are not diligent. They can claim and take by faith. I claim it by faith. I receive by faith. Their faith, wow, no diligence. You cannot commit anything into their hand and go to bed. You cannot. God cannot trust them. My brother was speaking to us, and what I can summarize from that is, can God trust you with his power? Can he trust you with, some of us were doing so well, serving the Lord until you got the husband you were praying for. You were choir rehearsals at four. You'll be there by three to claim the chairs. Diligent. The moment God gave you that husband, two weeks you are not even in church. Heaven is looking for men and women that will be diligent. Now let's talk about our prayer lives. Some of us don't pray the whole week. On Friday, we go for night vigil. I say, wow, hallelujah. But do you know that it is even better to do 10 minutes every morning Every day, 10 minutes with the Lord. Same time. You are so diligently committed to it that heaven knows that between 7 a.m. and 7.10, God sent his here waiting to offer sacrifices of praise. You build a pattern in the spirit. You build con con consistency in the spirit. That is the power of the early church. They continue daily. Steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in prayer, and fear came upon the people. They continued daily. Do you know that man of God, people of God, sisters of God, brothers of God, whatever we want to call ourselves, do you know that while we are not experiencing the power of God like we should, we are not diligent with our prayer lives. We are not diligent with the word. We are not diligent. We are not diligent. And God is saying today, my son, I'm calling you to the place of diligence. 
I'm calling you to the place of brokenness before I can call you to the place of honor. I must first of all call you to the place of service where you faithfully serve me. Exodus 19, verse 1 to 3. Oh, wow. Lord, help me. We will round up here. Yes. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Verse 2. For they had departed from Rephidim and come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. Verse 3. Look at verse 3 now. He says, and Moses went up to God. Can you see that? Verse 3. And the Lord called to him. Can you see that? What my brother was sharing. He called it to himself again. From the matter saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. Verse 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. To myself. Now, quick, let's go to verse 9 because of time. Let's jump to verse 9. Verse 9. Because of time. Verse 9. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. Hallelujah. So, my goodness, I come to you. I just come to introduce you to the people. For 40 years you have been diligent. Then you went to the backside of the desert and you located the mountain of God and I appeared unto you. Faithfully. You have been faithful. So now I'm calling you to a place of honor. I'm bringing you to a place of honor. That was where a man was so diligent for 40 years following sheep. Now God is putting him on the pedestal. He said, I want to speak to you so that people can hear our conversation. Men and women of God on this platform. If you connect with God, he will be the one speaking to you and organizing your honor. He will be the one doing it. You will not be the one saying, Pastor, do you know that I can preach? You will not be the one distributing your CV. You know, some of our brothers and sisters, we put on time, we carry box, and then we say, well, I, I, I want them to give me honor. You know, I know I, by the grace of God, before they talk, he said, by the grace of God, God was the one planning the honor for Moses. He said, I want to bring you to the top, and I will be talking to you. People will be hearing my conversation with you so that they will, they will respect you. They will honor you. They will believe you forever, forever, forever. This is where diligence can bring a man to. Yes. My prayer for us today is this. That God will help us. Not only you, myself. I'm not talking to you alone, brother. I'm talking to myself. Now, may I conclude with this tonight? Because it's a whole thing we have to talk about. I sense like I have to say this to you. If you seek honor for yourself, when you get it, you will destroy yourself. Look at Saul. Honor me before the people. Is a man or woman who has failed that looks for honor before men. The one that has served God faithfully will be honored. Did Jesus not say that? If you honor me, my, I will honor you before my father. My father will honor you, not even me. My father will be the one to honor you. It's a principle in scripture that when you serve God faithfully in your corner, no man knows what you are doing. Do you know that nobody knew when this Moses was following animals in the bush for 40 years? But the day he met with God, his diligence brought him to that place. God made him a God over Pharaoh. But that is not the end of the journey. Because many of us, after we have just been able to bring the children of Israel out of captivity, we stop praying. What, what have we accomplished that we have stopped? We've started relaxing. What have we accomplished? He says, since I took over the choir now, by the grace of God, the choir has grown from five people to 15 people. I think now they need to really, you know, they, they, they need to honor me. <laughs> no. What have you done? After leaving that place, God said, okay, come now. I'm going to now start talking to you physically. I will be the one to honor you. People of God, the Lord said I should say this to somebody. As long as you keep dreaming, you will never get there. Sorry. Did you hear me? Yes, and you heard me. 
But the moment you start giving someone else's dream a meaning, you will get there. You see, Joseph, when Joseph was dreaming in his father's house, I saw the moon bow before me. He got coat of many colors, stirred up envy for himself. When he got to Egypt, did you ever hear that Joseph dreamt? He didn't dream in Egypt. What was he doing in Egypt in prison? He was interpreting dreams, giving meaning to the dreams of people. Became so diligent in, do you know that it was his diligence in service in Potiphar's house that got him into prison? The enemy is interested in diligent men, diligent women. He will come after you, either through Delilah or through Mrs. Potiphar or through Elimas the sorcerer. He will come after you. Or through Balaam, he will come after you. The moment you become consistent and faithful in your work with God, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. In prison, my dear brothers and sisters, this man was interpreting dreams. Can I conclude with this? I would have expected someone like Joseph to promise himself that he will never dream me. anything with dream. I will never have anything to do with dreams again. When they got into prison, he saw two people sad. He said, why is your countenance so sad? <laughs> In prison, a man that was falsely accused, thrown into prison. Now, what was inside started finding expression? Even in prison, my God, a few days ago, I was studying and I started weeping. They put Paul in prison. Before they would come, the jailer was already saved. The jailer, the people that were supposed to be watching over him. So what can the devil do with that kind of a man? You put him in prison, he will convert the people there. You put him outside, you stone him, he will get up and go on. So what can the devil do with such a life? Nothing. Now the question is, what can heaven not do with such a life? With such a life that we say, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. Wow. Wow. In prison, giving meaning to the dreams of others. I don't know what brought you to Qatar. Maybe you have issues. But will you push your issues aside and say, Lord, the gift things you have put in me must be a blessing for the kingdom to my generation. Do you know this? It was the same thing he did in prison that he did in the palace. I said this to some people. The problem is the same. It's the scale that is different. What did he do in prison? He interpreted dream. What did he do in the palace? He interpreted dream. What God will use to place you where he wants you to be. After you have been called out of darkness, after you have been called out of, you have ensured that your garment is white, like, like Moses, like Joseph, purity and holiness. After you can say, God is with him. They said Joseph was a prosperous man in prison. Why? God was with him. I want to conclude by saying, as you continue in diligent service before God, faithfully following him and giving yourself wholly unto him. There is no limit to what heaven can do in you and through you by the spirit. I want us to pray. Can we pray? Can we pray? Just talk to the Lord. My brother spoke about keeping our garments white. Keeping our garments white. And I'm telling us today that heaven is calling us to a place of diligence. Heaven is calling us to the place of that discipline. That, that consistency. That faithfulness. Where heaven can say, Tokwe was faithful in all his house. All his house. Paul said, I want to thank my God who counted me faithful and put me into ministry. Faith brings you to the Lord for without faith, it is impossible to please God. But faithfulness qualifies you 
for the ministry of Jesus. If you are not faithful in that small thing, greater things cannot be committed into your hand. Will you ask the Lord today, Lord, I'm not faithful in my prayer life enough. Help me. Maybe you're a pastor here. When last did you take three days to fast and pray for your people? Maybe you're a choir leader here. You complain every time about that sister. When last did you go on your knees to say, Lord, today, God forbid that I will cease to pray for you and to teach you the good and godly way. Maybe you are a leader here. You are afraid to confront sin, to confront it. Today, why not talk to God and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I want to leave this place, this meeting, and become renewed. There are things you have been believing God for that are not coming true. It's because your diligence is not good enough. You take the work of God carelessly. Curse is any man, any woman that handles the work of God deceitfully. These are unspoken curses that we have incurred over our own lives because what we are doing is deceitful. It's not real. It's not true. We know the life we live outside and the life we live inside. And God is saying, make it right tonight. We are laying foundations tonight and we call on you, our Father, to help us. Help us. Do, oh God, tonight on this platform what none of us, Pastor, what Pastor Wale cannot do, what Pastor Godson cannot do, what Pastor Aki cannot do, what I cannot do. Do what no apostle can do. Do what no prophet can do. Do what only the Holy Spirit can do in the hearts of men on this platform tonight. That Father, my Father, I told you, Lord, that out of this platform, great men and women will rise to fulfill the purpose of the kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.